This is CBC Here and Now. Some people do stop by and give us cold water and we get the scattered freezy or the popsicle and stuff like that. Well, today, earlier, we went into Bowering Park and sat around and looked at the, the ducks. And we the, usually got water coming back and forth for the boys all day long. Stay hydrated, drink lots of water. Try to take a couple of hours break from the heat and go somewhere indoors with air conditioning so body has time to cool down. Battling the heat, how are you coping with extreme temperatures? And how do you know if you're getting heat stroke? That's all just ahead on Here and Now. Good evening, I'm Carolyn Stokes. And I'm Arianna Kellen. We start tonight with a fire in Twillingate that destroyed a well-known fishing vessel. Well-known because the boat was featured on the reality TV series Cold Water Cowboys. Flames and thick black smoke could be seen coming from the Sebastian sails early this morning. The volunteer fire department arrived shortly after 6 a.m. and began fighting it. They had the fire under control within minutes, but it had also spread to the government wharf. We got it basically knocked down, but it's shit that is contained down like an engine room, that kind of stuff where we're having trouble to get get the water down to get the fire out. And on top of that, then we got our wharf on fire with all piece of timbers. One witness heard small explosions believed to be containers of propane on board the boat. Hours later, the boat was still smoldering with the fire contained to the engine room. Now, firefighters kept putting water on it, trying to kill what they described as a stubborn fire while also spraying the wharf to put that fire out. Now, this afternoon, the vessel began to submerge at the dock. Propane okay, tanks were going off. You couldn't get handy to the boat. You just had to let it do its own thing until they could get a safe enough position to get out there. Right. So when they got out there and they got 20 hours off the home for the border, that's what brought it under control. When you deal with a, you know, a fire uh, at your local wharf here, where there's a number of fishing vessels tied up, uh, I guess we're lucky, I guess, that it's only one. Uh, from my understanding this morning, uh, the winds weren't very high. Uh, so, you know, right now the fire is contained in one vessel. And the vessel Sebastian Sails is well known because it and the crew were featured on the Discovery Canada show Cold Water Cowboys for four seasons. Soaring temperatures in St. John's have led to a heat warning for the city. Temperatures hit 27 degrees today and tomorrow it will be even hotter. Yes, and not everyone has the option of staying inside near an air conditioner. Here and now is Kate McGilvery is live from Bannerman Park tonight. So Kate, you spent the day speaking with people who have no choice but to brave the heat. That's right. People who have to be outside in this weather have to be very careful. Earlier today, I paid a visit to a construction site at Topsail and Black Marsh Roads. The sun was just beating down on this crew, so I asked them how they stay cool. We usually got water coming back and forth for the boys all day long, and so uh, we're just trying to keep everyone hydrated and grin and beer it, and is it? What we do here on this site particularly, like we'll take 10 minute rotations, like we'll be, I'll be out for 10 minutes, and then someone will go and sit down in the truck, cool down, get some cold water, and do more food or whatever they need, right? And, Everyone makes sure everyone's all right, keeps an eye on each other, right? But even with precautions, a full day in the sun takes its toll. It's exhausting. It's like doing 10 times the work all in one day, right? The, the heat takes to go to you. As temperatures continued to climb this afternoon, we paid a visit to the gathering place. Volunteer coordinator Nancy Elkins was working hard to make sure everybody had plenty of water and a cool place to sit. People are inside hanging out throughout the building, just sitting down in whatever rooms we have up there. And they're sitting down in the art room reading or they're sitting in the music room reading uh, and just enjoying, relaxing. The problem is the gathering place closes in the late afternoon. Meanwhile, the heat is supposed to continue overnight. Elkin says that poses a unique risk to her more vulnerable clients. Many of our people are staying in, in uh, bed sitters, um, some apartments, uh, there's no air conditioning. Uh, very, very hot, and some guests have reported that they're now sleeping outside in the nighttime. And of course, uh, some of them are staying by themselves, sleeping out underneath the tree. Uh, we know that that's not a safe thing to do. Joe Galway stopped by the gathering place to load up on water. He's been feeling the heat at night as well. 
They got a fan in the bedroom. I had the windows open wide, and I got two table fans, one on my side and one on the wife's side. Other than that, that's pretty good. But I still can't sleep. Unless we get through some cold weather here, and it would be all right. Tonight's temperatures are not expected to get below 18 degrees, so for people without air conditioners, that is going to pose a problem. Earlier today, just to get a sense of what alternatives there are, I called around to some big box stores, and no one that I called had any fans at all left in stock. So, Carolyn, it's looking like some people are in for a sleepless night. Absolutely. Uh, Kate, thank you so much. Kate McGillivray reporting live from Benjamin Park tonight. And it's not just the folks in St. John's for sure that will uh, be feeling the heat. We have a heat warning in place for most of the island from St. John's right over to Deer Lake. Conegra included uh, in that as well. So tomorrow is going to be even hotter. We're looking at Humidex values getting up to 37 degrees in some areas. So this is a look at your overnight temperatures. As Kate was just saying, things uh, are getting pretty are going to stay pretty warm overnight tonight. You can see this is 3 a.m. on uh, tonight and it's still 18 degrees in St. John's, 19 in Gander. So yeah, you're going to want to turn your fans on, air conditioners, whatever you got, turn it on for uh, this evening. And tomorrow the temperatures bump up pretty quickly early on in the day by noontime. And uh, here we are at five o'clock and we're in the 30s in central areas. So these are your temperature highs for tomorrow. Sun right across the board. Uh, most of the heat will be in the east and for central areas a little bit cooler in the west, but not by much. Humidex values there still in the 33 mark. Uh, as we head up through Labrador, temperatures cooler along the coast for sure and some showers throughout the day. Labrador City pretty warm though getting up to 26 degrees. Hopefully by early summer next year we're going to have a cafe with a deck outside. A new cafe is one of the changes you can expect to see at Cape Spear. The old lighthouse is also undergoing some renovations. We'll take you on a tour in about half an hour on Here and Now. An RNC officer facing a charge of breaching an emergency protection order has now had that order thrown out. Constable Steve Kernu was arrested and held in the lockup overnight after allegedly breaching the order. Kernu is a well-known RNC officer because he often represented the force as a media liaison. The emergency protection order is granted by a judge to provide immediate protection protection in cases of family violence. It falls under the Family Violence and Protection Act and is not a criminal charge. On Friday, a judge granted that the emergency order be terminated. However, Kernu is still expected in court next month on charges of breaching that initial order. Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Officer Joe Smythe is going to trial. Smythe has pleaded not guilty to obstructing justice. He was charged after the Alberta Serious Incident Response Team investigated a complaint involving a traffic stop in May of 2017. Smythe was cleared of wrongdoing in the 2015 shooting death of Don Dumphy in Mitchellsbrook. Three days have been set aside for the court to hear evidence starting January 7th. Smythe has been suspended without pay. A former Mountie charged with child luring using a computer faced one of his accusers today. Ian Callback was charged with one count in 2013 and another in 2014. He was a member of the RCMP in Hopedale at the time. Today, a girl who was 15 at the time of the alleged offense testified that Callback initially approached her on Facebook asking if he could send her money. She also said they video chatted on Skype, though the image quality wasn't very good. She said the conversation turned sexual and he asked her to remove her top. Defense lawyer Jason Edwards questioned how well she could identify callback given the quality of the video. The case continues tomorrow. A man accused of killing a well-respected community leader in Labrador is heading to trial. But Jonathan Hennock won't face a jury in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Hennock is accused of first-degree murder in the death of 88-year-old Regula Shuley two years ago. He's also alleged to have set fire to her home. His lawyer, Bob Buckingham, argued Hennock won't ha wouldn't have a fair trial in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Buckingham said the heavy media coverage and and Shuley's prominence in the community would taint the jury pool. A judge agreed to move his trial to St. John's, which will take place next June. 
He choked his girlfriend until she was nearly unconscious, then let go. And when she began breathing, Palmar wrapped his hands around her neck again. The whole assault was witnessed by the woman's seven year old daughter. And on Friday, Mar was sentenced to 570 days in jail for the attack that happened last September. But with credit for time and a half he spent in custody, Mar has 82 days left to serve on his sentence. The public transit system in St. John's is getting some upgrades. Projects were announced this morning by the federal and municipal governments totaling three quarters of a million dollars. The feds and the city are splitting the cost 50 50. More wheelchair accessible bus shelters will be installed and a new tire balancing machine so buses can be serviced in house. Plus a new high tech computer system will allow the transit system to be more reliable and efficient than the one that's in place today. The Team Guju Highway extension is inching towards completion. This drone footage of the project was recorded by the province on August 2nd and released to the public today. Government says paving is well underway, concrete medians have been placed along the roadway, and wiring is in place for street lighting. The four-lane route, which runs from Kemal Road to Thompson Road, is scheduled to open this fall. The province allocated almost $14 million for the project in this year's budget. Police in Fredericton are releasing more information about the weekend shooting that killed four people, including two police officers. The homicide investigation into Friday's shooting that killed two of our citizens, Donald Robichaud and Bobby Wright, and two of our officers, Constable Rob Costello and Constable Sarah Burns, is continuing. The police chief confirms that the gunman used a long gun in the shooting. It is an unrestricted firearm and available for purchase in Canada. Police say the suspect does have a license for the gun. Investigators have also gathered evidence from the scene, including police body camera video. Matthew Vincent Raymond has been charged with four counts of first degree murder. He's due back in court next week. And we are also hearing from some of the people who have been affected the most by this shooting. The widow of Constable Rob Costello spoke to CBC about his death and what the loss means to the family. He, he always told me that no matter what happened on the job, that he, he would always come home. He had an extraordinary moral compass. He was extraordinarily generous. He made me want to be a better person. Jackie McLean and Constable Costello would have celebrated their fifth anniversary later this month. Costello had two daughters from a previous marriage. He was also a stepfather to McLean's son and daughter. McLean says next to his children, Costello was most proud of his job. He was a 20 year veteran of the Fredericton police. There will be a regimental funeral for Costello and Constable Sarah Burns this Saturday. Well, it's been almost two years since the provincial government announced regulations for the payday loan industry, but those rules are still not in force. And the province is pointing to Ottawa as the holdup. Here now is Jen White has those details. The province passed its payday loan legislation back in 2016, an attempt to provide protection for people needing those services. I think if people need to go to that for some unfortunate reason, they're going to find it somewhere. So what we're going to ensure is, is that the, uh, there's protection there for them. Uh, there's a number of steps that we will bring in to ensure that there's, there's proper protection, the best of our ability. Service NL says those rules will set borrowing limits, place a cap on fees of $21 for every $100 borrowed, increase consumers' awareness of their rights when entering into a payday loan agreement, and provide them with remedies when companies don't honour their responsibilities. Those rules were expected to be enacted by the end of last year, but to do that, the province needs an exemption from a section of the Criminal Code of Canada. Service NL says it's still waiting on the federal government. Meanwhile, the Federal Justice Department says it's working on the province's request, but officials there can't say when the order will be made because it's a decision for the federal cabinet.
several other provinces. Al Antel with the province's credit counseling services said at the time that the group was thrilled with the news and, committed and, interested and, they got it. and still is today. Although he says they're frustrated that it's taking so long for the regulations to come into effect. People are trading under the old rules and the old rules were not in the consumer's best interest. Antel says he sees the impact of those rules every day. Payday loans are utilized by people at the lower end of the income scale on our caseload and people who have fixed incomes that are low, not a good way to borrow. If you do the, if you work out the percentage rates, it's just the percentage rates are outrageous. Service NL says the province is ready to make the payday loan rules official just as soon as Ottawa takes action. Jen White, CBC News, St. John's. A northern Nigerian woman living in St. John's is leading the charge to help bring supplies to her home country. The We Care Foundation has been working for years to help those affected by Boko Haram in Nigeria. But this year, the group is shipping over a busload of goods. Here and now's Jeremy Eaton explains. Well, look, brand new calculators. Zainab Jared's house is filled floor to ceiling with donated gifts bound for Africa. They don't even know how to use this, so, but they will be taught how to use all this. Jared's been living in St. John's for more than 25 years, but she still has family, friends, and lots of ties in her native country of Nigeria. Recently, her husband and son joined her on a trip back home. So seeing the situation there, people without clothes, kids, no shoes, we went to schools, no books at all. Last year, the group shipped over four used cars filled with books, then sold the cars for cash and used the money to help students displaced by Boko Haram get back into school. 56 students have gone back to the classroom thanks to the We Care Foundation. This year, it hopes to help 40 more boys and girls. This year, we are planning to send six plus school bus that was donated by persons and sons in CBS. So that bus is going to make a difference. When it gets to Nigeria, the bus will then be used to help transport students safely to and from school. As for all of this stuff, plus multiple storage lockers filled with more donations, will fill the bus and the cars. All of it has been donated by students in CBS, plus people in and around St. John's. I was crying, <laughs> tears of joy and just amazement as how, as how these young kids can think of other children worlds away or thousands of miles away. All of this stuff will be given out to people living in refugee camps. Jared knows how much of a difference it will make to their lives. It's going to mean a lot to them. I will be seeing people crying, women dancing, <laughs> people wearing clothes that they normally would not get to wear. The donated goods will soon be packaged up and put into a shipping container. It will then leave Halifax at the end of this month or next with the goal of making it to Nigeria by December. Jeremy Eaton, CBC News, St. John's. The person I called was the president uh, of the local FFAW in Grand Bank, and he was ecstatic. The federal government announces a reversal to the controversial Arctic surf clam quotas, giving the entire quota back to Clearwater. What does that mean for Grand Bank and why the reversal? We'll talk to the MP for the area next.
Welcome back to Here and Now. The federal government has backtracked on a controversial surf clam decision, but it's still mum on why. The lucrative surf clam contract was rife with trouble from the start. Clearwater Seafoods originally had all the quota until the federal government handed over 25% to the Five Nations Clam Company in the Maritimes. That spelled trouble for workers at the Clearwater plant in Grand Bank. Now, months after debate and allegations the former fisheries minister had family ties to the company, DFO has changed its mind. Churance Rogers is a Liberal MP for the area. He says the decision to reverse the surf clam contract was made before the cabinet shuffle last month. I spoke with we'll him see, today about potentially the Potentially see workers. It means that uh, Grand Bank is going to have some stability for at least 2018, 2019 and going into 2020. Uh, I've already had discussions with Clearwater some time ago about this eventuality and they're prepared to uh, go fish and process the 25% of the clams uh, that would otherwise be left in the water. And so for economic reasons, for the company, for the, for the peninsula, for the people of Grand Bank, for the fishermen, it makes a whole lot of sense that they go get their current fish, their current license older. And so therefore, uh, the discussions will be ongoing between DFO and Clearwater to make sure that happens very soon. So is it a guarantee that Clearwater will get the remaining 25% or is that something that's still being discussed? No, I think that's pretty much guaranteed. Uh, they they uh, are really the only company that has the ability to fish the clam, number one, and certainly uh, they have the you know professional well uh, automated plant in Grand Bank that can certainly produce uh, the finished product for the surf clam industry. And what about the decision? Uh, the last time we checked, DFO didn't say why they made the decision, just that it happened. Um, have you heard anything else since then? No, actually, I've been deferring that question to the minister, which will be in the province tomorrow. Uh, minister Wilkins is there meeting with him early in the morning to have a chat about some of that around that those issues. But for uh, commercial confidentiality reasons and possible legal implications, I was advised not to share a whole lot of information uh, that, uh, you know, when I only have part information. I'd much prefer that the minister who has a complete file and the complete information will answer those questions. Have you heard from some of the people who were impacted by this and what this means for them? Have you heard directly from those people? Oh, absolutely. I've talked to the first person I called was the president uh, of the local FFAW in Grand Bank and he was ecstatic. Um, I talked to him on Friday evening after we got confirmation. Uh, I, I knew this decision was taken prior to the change of cabinet ministers just prior to uh, but unfortunately I couldn't share that information simply because I needed confirmation from the current minister and government that's where we were where we were going so I had to uh, it was a little bit frustrating not be able to share good news because I've been working on this file for months and uh, the other MPs have been giving great support a lot of people spoke it on this file uh, and and you know today it's not about taking credit for it it's about it's happening it's great news for Grand Bank it's great news for the people on the Buren Plancha the people that work on the the, the uh, trawler fleet the draggers with clear water. So for me, it's a great day uh, for the Beer and Peninsula, and uh, I'm just happy to be able to announce the good news. Now, Jonathan Wilkinson is the new federal fisheries minister, and as you heard Terrence Robert Rogers say, he will be in town tomorrow, and uh, he'll hopefully be able to answer some of those questions about why the reversal happened, and we'll have more on that coming up tomorrow on Here and Now. I'm here in Bannerman Park where people have been sharing their tricks to eat. As you can see behind me, people have come up with some very unique ways to catch a breeze here in the park. We're going to have more on that coming up on Here and Now.
Their update is brought to you by Take Charge Business Efficiency Program. Over 570 businesses have saved energy and taken charge of their bottom line. Find out how you can, too. Well, surprise, surprise, the weather is the story again today. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to get to some of the temperatures because it was hot today. It was hotter tomorrow, oh, too. Yeah, we have to look out for that. But yeah. we have to show you this video first. Ooh. Oh, wow. This is Capelin swimming near the shore at Blackhead Conception Bay North this weekend. Wow, that looks so cool. Uh, our executive producer, Peter Gulledge, gave us this video. So thanks to Peter for this. That is neat how Isn't they're all it? streaming together. Very cool. Yeah, see right through. Yeah. So and it's hot. That's a way to keep cool, I yeah. guess. You know, if you're a swim. You're good if you're a fish. But it's <laughs> yeah. going to get hotter, right, than what it, it is right it now? It is. Yeah, there is a heat warning in place, as I, I mentioned a bit earlier. But temperatures are looking to be hotter tomorrow than they were today. Let's start with a look at today's highs. Got up to 27 degrees uh, in St. John's today. With the Humanex, it was around 29. Uh, warmer, though, for central areas. Badger, 30 degrees as the high today. And and uh, some pretty comfortable temperatures there for uh, parts of Labrador, Happy Valley, Goose Bay, 24 degrees uh, as the high. So yes, as I mentioned earlier, we do have this heat warning in effect. Humidex values, particularly for the Gander area tomorrow, getting up around 37 uh, degrees. For St. John's, we're looking at about 36. So it's going to feel really, really hot tomorrow clear skies as well overnight tonight we're not looking at much by way of overcast skies for much of labrador as well but there is a bit of a, a shower system moving through overnight into labrador bringing some uh, pretty early morning showers to labrador west but not for the island you can see it stays very clear all night long and those temperatures are staying very warm overnight as well so you'll want to turn on your fans or whatever you have uh, to keep cool 18 degrees as the overnight low for uh, St. John's and for Gander, even Corner Brook overnight low there, 17 degrees. Much cooler though for parts of a Labrador, much more comfortable sleep for uh, folks up there. So here's a look at my Clematis is in my backyard. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is the uh, early morning outlook. So for St. John's, you can see the temperatures are going to start really hot and just going to bump up throughout the day. 20 degrees with lots of sunshine as well for central uh, Newfoundland. A little bit more cloud cover for the west and cooler temperatures and a few showers for Labrador should clear off though in the west uh, into the afternoon. Clear skies for much of the island tomorrow. A little bit of cloud cover on the northern peninsula there and a chance of showers for the St. Anthony area. And uh, this kind of band of showers working its way through Labrador all day tomorrow. So yes, this is our your temperature highs for tomorrow. 29 is the high for St. John's. Humidex of 36. Cooler along the coast, along the southern Avalon there. 32 degrees for central parts of the island tomorrow. So that's where it's going to really be hot tomorrow. And the Humidex value there just a little bit higher. 37 degrees on the west coast still pretty hot a few more clouds there and a humidex of 33 for the gander area and as we head into the straits a chance of some afternoon showers for the st anthony area temperatures around 20 degrees for most areas there and those showers that have been working their way across labrador throughout the day will keep things a little bit cooler 22 degrees as the high for uh, churchill falls 26 for labrador Lab City. Now we are going to get a bit of a cool down as we start to head into Wednesday, but as I said, tomorrow is going to be hot. So if you plan to be outdoors and enjoying these hot temperatures tomorrow, there are some precautions you may want to take to stay safe. This afternoon, I caught up with the province's chief medical officer, Dr. Claudia Sarbu, to talk about ways to beat the heat. So Dr. Sarbu, what should people keep in mind as they're out enjoying all of this beautiful weather that we're having? that the heat may pose a, a health risk for uh, humans. Uh, I'm speaking about heat rush, heat edema, heat syncopa, heat exhaustion, and the final one is the heat stroke or the sunstroke, which is a life-threatening condition. But the good news is that all the heat um, consequences on health are preventable. Mm -hmm. 
so life threatening. So it's it's pretty serious business when you're talking about being outside in the heat and and making sure that you take care of yourself. Yes, absolutely. So um, we can talk about few preventive measures. Yeah. First of all, so uh, be aware when the heat alerts are in place. Try to plan your outdoor activities in the morning or in the evening. And of course, we need to use insect repellent because we try to avoid uh, mosquito bites. Mm -hmm. Then if you really have to be outdoors during heat times, like between 10 and 2 or 3 o'clock, then try to take a couple of hours break from the heat and go somewhere indoors with air conditioning so body has time to cool down. Very, very important is to drink plenty of water. And I do recommend only water. We need to avoid alcohol or beverages that have caffeine mm -hmm. because that will help with dehydration. And the trick with the water is that we should not wait to feel thirsty. That is already too late and our body is dehydrated. Then use um, uh, lightweight, loose fitting clothing. It's very important so our body can breathe. And um, try to cool down yourself with a sponge with water or a little bit of spray of, of water. It is important to be exposed to the breeze. Mm -hmm. This also helps to reduce the body temperature. What signs should people uh, look for uh, if they think that they might be getting heat stroke or heat exhaustion? So the signs are a rapid heart, uh, heart rate, rapid breathing. We may experience intense headache with nausea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. And if you find people that are confused or aggressive or irritable or even unconscious, this is already an emergency, so call 911. And in the meantime, while waiting, we could do a few things to help them uh, to cool down the body temperature. So we try to bring the person uh, in a cooler place. It could be simply shade or somewhere indoor with air conditioning. Uh, to remove the excess clothing and spray with garden hose, uh, put the person in a shower or simply use wet cold towels on the face, neck, head, armpits. This will help to decrease the body temperature while we are waiting for the emergency crews to come. And I know that you deal uh, primarily with humans, but I guess it's worth saying that people shouldn't leave their animals in cars and they should be careful about how their animals are being treated during the hot weather too. Nobody should be left in a car, not even for 10 minutes, because if the car is left in sun in 10 minutes, the temperature may raise with 20 Fahrenheit or almost seven degrees. So it's very important, take everybody out of the car. If you want to go for a little bit of shopping, just don't say you are be back. You are, you will be back in five minutes. Better take everybody out from the car. Yeah. So much of this sounds like common sense, but I think yeah. it's still worth talking about because yes. sometimes you can forget. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's really common sense. For example, I don't know. Cover your windows. Use curtains or or blinds to stop the sun to block it from heating up your indoor in your house. Um, don't cook in the oven if if we have a heat alert in place. So many many common sense kind of tricks, but we all forget about it. So we need reminders. All right, Dr. Sarbu, thank you so much for coming out and speaking with us. Uh, let's go get some water. Yes, <laughs> let's drink some water. <laughs> Thanks. Well, water is definitely one way to uh, mm -hmm. keep cool. Some others will turn to ice cream as a cool treat. Yeah, which got us thinking, how long would it take ice cream to melt in this heat? So we used a couple of cameras and this video has been sped up. Ah, it took about half an hour for both of these uh, delicious desserts to completely melt away to nothing. Yeah, it doesn't take much. <laughs> Looks so sad. <laughs> that one's going strong it on the is, end. It is, though. It's like the great ice cream <laughs> melting race. <laughs> and she's down. There we go. <laughs> well, ice cream's one way to get the job done. But well, plenty of people were out finding other ways to stay cool. Kate McGilvery is live in Vanderman Park. So, Kate, what's it like down there now? Well, it's certainly starting to feel a little cooler down here. There's a beautiful breeze through the trees. And as you can see, there's still a lot of people taking advantage of this summer day. From my perspective, I can see a lot of picnics happening, which seems like a pretty good idea to me. We were here earlier and we asked people about what they were doing to beat the heat. Like I'm a runner, so I try okay. to make sure I run early in the morning before the heat picks up. Stay hydrated, drink lots of water, nothing too exciting. Um, if I was younger, I'd enjoy the splash pad, but I don't think it's, you know, the best thing to do for a 33-year-old woman to be running through a splash pad in the middle of the day. It's great. Um, it is really sunny out, and I might get a sunburn, maybe. Um, 
but I don't care. We have a couple of rivers that we go to. There's one in Flat Rock that's really nice. Um, Sunshine Park, we were out there the other day and went for a nice swim in White Waste Pond in Torbay. That was really refreshing. And yeah, get out swimming as much as we as much as we can, go and spending down the time but down by the uh, ocean. Clark's Beach the other day was really nice. Today earlier we went into Bowering Park and sat around and looked at the the ducks and the the pigeons and the swans and it was a beautiful breeze and it was lovely. We had a picnic uh, out in the park before we came here and under the shade. It's really all we've been doing, just kind of hanging out. <laughs> Tomorrow is going to be even more intense, hot and sunny with a humidex of 36 in the afternoon. So if you didn't get that ice cream or get that swim, you have another scorching day tomorrow to get them in. Reporting live for Here and Now, I'm Kate McGilvery in St. John's. Sipping and sightseeing. Parks Canada's Shining Up Cape Spear. I'm Ryan Brockerville and I'll have more on that coming up. Welcome back to Here and Now. One of the province's most historic sites is getting a facelift. Cape Spear is under construction this season and is promising some new features for next season. Here and Now's Ryan Brockerville took a tour. It's a popular tourist destination and it's getting a boost. More than $6 million in federal money is giving the most easterly point in North America a new look. Cape Spear is a must-see for anyone who steps foot in this province. And Parks Canada representatives are ecstatic. The site is finally getting some much needed work done. We're up on top of the, of the hill now overlooking uh, the rest of uh, Cape Spear National Historic Site. And uh, on back of us there is the, uh, the lighthouse, uh, which is in uh, what, what some people might think is a little bit of a state of disrepair, but in actual fact, we're in the process of uh, doing an awful lot of conservation work on the building there. But we've taken the tower of the Cockpitla off already. We've enclosed the top part of it now with a small wooden structure that's going to protect the building throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall until the, uh, the copula itself is actually restored. Uh, we're looking at October right about now. Cape Spear isn't the only place getting work done. Keo says 
there's been money spent at other sites. We've done work on the parking lot at uh, Signal Hill. There's been quite a bit of money put into the uh, Ryan premises, National Historic Site. This year we're doing, also doing work on some restoration work out at the Hawthorne Cottage out in Brigus. We're doing some preliminary work out at uh, Castle Hill. Uh, we're currently looking at the, uh, the historic walls out there as well. So there's, there's been quite a, quite a number of projects that we've been able to do through this, uh, through this uh, investment. Uh, from the from the federal government, and uh, I think we're people see we're we're putting we're putting the money to good use. At Cape Spear, the money is going into new signage, new walkways. The site is still under construction, but many improvements have already been made. We're standing now at the most easterly point. For those that have uh, that haven't been here for a few years, they'll notice quite a difference here. We've taken down all the old uh, wooden railings and the uh, uh, the wooden decking that we had here, replaced that with new decking and also some metal ratings that allow us really to blend more into the landscape here. What people want when they come here is kind of more of a natural look and feel, so we took all of that old wood off. Everything's a little bit sleeker, a little bit uh, cleaner looking. We've had new interpretation here. Uh, we're gonna be putting a plaque on the, the large rock that we see here on back as well uh, that, that denotes exactly where the most easterly point is so people can get their photographs there. And just below this, we've also added what we call the lower most easterly point, which is an area that's closer to the, uh, to the water so you can see whales from down there. And when it gets cold out there at the water's edge, there will soon be a way for visitors to warm up. Coffee and lunch will be available on site. Hopefully by early summer next year, we're gonna have a cafe with a, a deck outside uh, here at the, at the site as well. We're gonna have additional washrooms that are gonna be put into that. We're gonna have a new gift shop down by the uh, parking lot. Uh, so that's gonna be open next year. It's still a work in progress, but Parks Canada representatives hope that Cape Spear and all of its upgrades will be ready by next summer. Ryan Brockerville, CBC News, Cape Spear. Man, Cape Spear looks so weird without the dome. Yeah, it does. It's it almost does. not recognizable, but it looks like it's going to be good. Looks good now. Yeah, and that cafe we were mm -hmm. talking about, uh, that's a great idea. Some place to go have a bite to eat. Lovely. Just ahead, why Mount Pearl hopes renovating its new pool will create an incubator for new tech startups.
Welcome back to here and now. We're going to get to the long range forecast in uh, just a moment. A little bit of a cool down coming, a few showers. Get to that in a second. Yes, but first, but first <laughs> we have to show you a group of beluga whales in Bay St. Marguerite, Quebec. Now, this drone footage was collected as part of research that Memorial University student Jacqueline Aubin is conducting this summer. Wow. Now, belugas in the St. Lawrence are doing poorly. And some female whales are dying after giving birth while their babies are washing ashore alive. So researchers like Aubin are trying to determine what to do with those babies. Yeah, Aubin is trying to see how the whales care for their young and if other females will adopt the orphan whales. And if she can prove that, the baby belugas may be rescued and released back into the wild. So Aubin returns to Mon this fall to study this aerial footage that she's collected and uh, see what she can do with it. That is spectacular. That is incredible. Gorgeous video and good luck with that research for yeah. sure. So sad. Yeah. So as I was saying, uh, we are looking at cool down coming uh, after we get through tomorrow's heat. I'll start with a look at the satellite and radar. You can see very little by way of cloud cover, but if we uh, back this up a bit, you can see that system uh, down along uh, the coast in the Toronto, Boston area. Well, that's going to be heading our way uh, into Wednesday and Thursday. So yes, we still have this heat warning in effect, as I've mentioned a few times. Worth mentioning again because it is going to be a scorcher tomorrow for all of these areas. Right over to Deer Lake, down McNegra, St. John's, everywhere is going to be Pretty hot with that Humidex. For Labrador, uh, we had those showers that are coming through. It's going to keep things a little bit cooler, but across the board on the island tomorrow, we're looking at lots of sunshine, 29 degrees as the high for St. John's in the 30s for central areas. Marystown, a little bit cooler, 26 degrees there, 27 in Corner Brook. So Humidex values over on the west coast about 33 and uh, for Labrador, mostly cloudy day coming for Nain and 13 degrees there. Some morning showers for Lab West that should start to clear off throughout the day, but that's definitely the hot spot at 26 degrees uh, tomorrow. So I just mentioned uh, that system that's coming through. The showers will continue for Labrador, and then by the time we get to Wednesday morning, the island should start to see some of those showers. And with that will come a slight cool down. Not much really because we are still in the low to mid 20s for the West Coast. They'll see the showers first on Wednesday and then we have a chance of showers for Central and for the East on Wednesday. You start to see more of that as we get into Wednesday night and Thursday and we have showers for Eastern Labrador 16 degrees and 14 degrees for Western Labrador. So much cooler there for sure. So this is the picture Wednesday evening into Thursday. Some much needed rain, I would say, at this point. Uh, I know my plants are, are dying for a drink, so that's a good thing anyways. Uh, so we're looking at showers for the island. Pretty much everyone is going to see some of this. Temperatures dipping down quite a bit compared to uh, what we're going to see tomorrow. 17 degrees to 20 degrees in the east and clearing off nicely for parts of Labrador. Temperatures around 19 for uh, the east and the west. So this is your five day forecast as we get into Friday. They'll still see some of those showers continuing 15 degrees as the high right now for Friday. So yeah, much cooler there. But as we get into the weekend, looking like it's going to warm up a, a bit there. And for uh, central areas, that rain should end by the time we get to Friday and Saturday, looking fairly good going into the weekend. Similar story with the West. So we just have that midweek uh, rain there to, to deal with. And then it all clears off for Labrador. They have a nice little stretch coming for uh, the east with a mix of sun and cloud and as well for western Labrador. Temperatures around the 20 degree mark. Pretty cool overnight lows, but that uh, rain should end as you head into the weekend. That's your forecast. Uh, Ariana, back to you. Thanks, Carolyn. Mount Pearl's plans to grow its population starts with the city's old swimming pool. Mount Pearl wants to renovate its old pool building and turn it into a type of incubator for technology startups. According to city officials, $3 million will renovate the space into a place where like-minded companies can get creative. The hope is people who work in the new space will settle down in the area and help offset the city's aging population. We very much view the technology sector as the future uh, in this province, in this region. And we're hoping to be a hub 
of activity for that industry and uh, encourage the young minds to come to Mount Pearl and help us develop a new city with a fresh vision and uh, we're really excited about the future. The idea didn't win a recent competition for federal money, but Mount Pearl is swimming ahead with it, looking for other revenue streams to make the hub happen. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was in Prince Edward Island today when he was asked by reporters about the opposition to his plans to put a price on carbon pollution. There are provinces that don't want to move forward, and we've seen a couple. Uh, we will move forward on our own at the federal level. I think the larger question is, what is their alternative to fight climate change? What we've seen from conservative politicians across the country uh, is criticism of our plan, but absolutely no uh, pretense even uh, that they have a plan of their own. Trudeau was also asked about trade frictions and Canada's supply management system protecting this country's dairy, poultry and egg industries. He says Canada is working on negotiations with the U.S. but will defend supply management. To Spain now, where the collapse of a pier left more than 300 people injured, but incredibly, no one was killed. The wooden pier fell in during a concert at the Seafront Festival in northwestern Spain. It was packed with people watching a rap artist. One witness says the artist told everyone to jump, and when they did, the pier gave way, plunging into the water. Some officials believe the pier was overcrowded. And here's a look at today's viewer photo of the day. Lovely around Ooh. the bay scene. Uh, any guesses, Ariana, where this is? <laughs> oh, it's a tough one. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is I have, a I have tough to think one. Of it. I'll let you know where this was taken after the break. Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, stargazers are being treated to a spectacular sight this month. You are looking at a time-lapse video over the Greek countryside of Perseid. A meteor shower is swirling across the night sky there. Uh, the, show comes, uh, the show in the sky comes around every August or so when Earth passes through dust from the comet called Swift Tuttle. Uh, it's best viewed in the northern hemisphere in isolated areas when the moon is not too bright. Gorgeous. 
Well, tonight we're wishing a happy retirement to a producer who's worked on Here and Now for many, many years. I have a credential. You cannot be inside a convention. Marilyn a Boone credential. had been a reporter with Here and Now in the 1980s. Yes, then moved behind the scenes as a producer with the show and the assignment producer for the newsroom. Just a couple of years ago, she shifted to our digital team, writing, producing, and overseeing news stories and other content for cbc.ca slash nl. I'm Marilyn Boone in St. John's West. Voters here give Tory heavyweight John Crosby a definite edge in this riding. Oh, I'd say Crosby is shooing. They're going to go for the man. But liberal Gene Payne appeals to the anti-free trade vote and the disillusioned. When I voted PC in the past, but this time I'm going to vote liberal. The NDP's Alf Sullivan is back in the race, but personal problems have all but crippled his campaign. I'll have a campaign report tomorrow night on Here and Now. Marilyn, what was the mood in the House when they were wrapping up? Well, right now, members are taking a 15-minute coffee break. Just minutes ago, they finished debate on the last of 29 pieces of legislation that were dealt with here today. When the Atlantic Accord was signed four years ago, the federal and provincial governments established a training fund to get people ready for offshore work. It's called Iceberg Industries, and it bottles water like this for President's Choice. So you cannot be inside a convention unless you get a credential. Will we get a credential? I don't know. You have to ask the people outside. As far as I know, you will not if you're working with the CBC. Please go. It was a close race in Humber East. But do you have... Ms. Burge got more votes than I did. There's just no other explanation. It's so simple. Okay, then, Marilyn, thanks very much. You're welcome. Uh. Marilyn, such a mentor and inspiration to so many, myself included. So uh, happy retirement, Marilyn. Yes, you will be missed for sure in the newsroom. Good luck.